Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Today is Friendship Saturday. We hope you guys are having a great day. Yes. Are getting ready to have a great day. <laughs> We're getting ready to wind down our Turkey Day weekend. Tomorrow is Church Day. Hope you're all ready for that. Share the broadcast out. Tell a friend about the broadcast. Amen. Come in a little bit there, Titty. All right. There you go. Looks like being close to me. Absolutely. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. We are excited. Let's give some shout outs. Hey, uh, Faye, I know you're traveling all the world, living your best life. I've been, been seeing you on Facebook. Good morning, Yalitza. Good morning, Jerry. Erica, good morning. Erica, you know, you can come out of the house before six weeks. I know the doctor told you six weeks, but it's not like a like a prison sentence or anything. You used to I, back in the I keep watching you walking down. <laughs> Pastor Franny had four C-sections. She was up working in two weeks. So <laughs> doesn't take six weeks. I'm just letting you know. Get on out of there, girl. Get moving. Ray, good morning to you. Brenda, good morning to you. Morning. Jeremiah, good morning to you. Cynthia, good morning to you. Good morning, Madeline, everyone. good morning to you. Oh, and you are healed, Erica, in <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen. Brenda, good morning to you. Jackson, Faye, good morning to you. Annie, good morning to you. Uh, how do you say Lunda. that? Lunda. I think that's yeah, Lunda. Lunda. Stowers, good morning to you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Natasha, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Delia, good morning. My cousin Desi, good morning good to you, morning. love. Uh, Ashley, good morning good to morning, you. Everyone. Terry, good morning to you. Daryl, good morning to you. Carmen, good morning to you. Roderick. Good morning to you, John Michael, or John, he's called Country Boy. Good morning to you, sir. Hallelujah. It's 8 o'clock. Today is Friendship Saturday, so we're going to pray. Uh, before we pray, I want to tell everybody, yesterday was Financial Friday. It was a great message. Uh, I want to thank everybody that joined, uh, but more importantly, I want to thank everybody that sowed into the broadcast, that gave of your resources. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. For all of y'all that took the time and 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 gave and sowed a seed into us spreading this message and spreading this gospel, we get on here every single morning live to encourage the body of Christ. Amen. Uh, it's what God told us to do, so we're going to do it till He tells us to stop doing it. But uh, we thank you and we thank you for your giving and for your seeds because that giving and that seed makes the show possible, allows us to do what we do as we advertise it and spread it out. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate it. And I want to let everybody know, we get a lot of letters and a lot of people writing in uh, that talk about what a blessing the show is to them. So thank you so much. Yes. All right? Why don't you pray when we get started? Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, Lord. Father, I thank you for everyone that's present this morning, Lord. Coming to you, Father, seeking you this morning. Father, just thank you, Father, that we feel, Lord. I thank you, Father, that cup that will be running over is running over, Lord because of your word. I just thank you, Father, for the fruit of the Spirit, Father, being produced in their lives, joy, happiness, peace, Lord, um, forbearance, Lord, kindness, Father. And I just thank you, Father, right now for them, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for friendship, Saturday. I thank you, Father, that we learn, Father, to be friendship, be fr have friendships because you called us to be friendly to people, Lord. And I just thank you, Father, we're the best of friends, Lord, because we give people the word but that can truly change their lives. And I just thank you, Father, for him right now. In Jesus' name. Man, good morning. So today is fresh. Saturday, uh, we asked a question. What kind of friend are you? What kind of friend are, are you? So today I want to talk about, number one, why friendships struggle. Why do, why do some of us have these issues with friendships? Uh, sometimes friendships just seem so, so difficult to maintain. Why do friendships struggle? Okay? So I want to start off by reading this scripture here in Ecclesiastics uh, chapter. Where did this thing go? No, oh no, she's talking to me. Let me find it. I know I got it here. I put it right, right here. Ecclesiastes chapter four, uh, verses nine to twelve 
in the Amplified Bible. We're going to read this slow. Listen to what this says. It's talking about friendships. Two are better than one because they have a good, more satisfying reward for their labor. For if they fall and the one lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie down together, then they have warmth. But if, but how can one be warm alone? And though a man might prevail against him who is alone, two would withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. So we see here in the Bible, it's talking about friendships. And it's talking about the vitalness of friendships. It's talking about, you know, hey, if you're, if you're cold by yourself, you know, if you have somebody there to warm you, it's going to help warm you. It talks about, you know, if you fall or stumble, you know, it's like my wife, you know, she broke her ankle. And, you know, if it wasn't for the family Man. here helping her, uh, it would have been very, very difficult for her. Uh, how do you get around? How do you do this? How do you do that? I mean, just something as simple as taking a shower, helping her get in and out of the shower. I mean, it, it, it's difficult when you're by yourself. Um, now, we know we're talking about family. And marriage in, in this instance, but it's the same with friends. You know, if you're single and you have friends, I find one of the issues that most people have with friendships is, number one, they don't re realize that friendship is an investment. A friendship is an investment. And number two, you got to realize friendships, you should always choose quality over quantity. Sometimes we're trying to have too many friends. You need the reason why you need to choose quality over quantity is because friendship is an investment. Quality will always win over quantity from the perspective of living a high quality life. If you're looking for good friendships, if you're looking for fruitful friendships, if you're looking for friendships that are going to result in being both mutually beneficial between you and the person you're a friend with, you can't have a gazillion of these things. Why? Because when I said they require an investment, they require an investment of your time. They require an investment of your money. They require an, an investment of emotional energy. <laughs> they require an investment of labor. I mean, I mean, friendships require real, tangible investments for them to flourish and for them to be fruitful, for them to have real meaning. I mean, it just is what it is. When John and I, I grew up, one of the gentlemen on the show, we grew up together. As kids, man, we invested our time together, working on our bikes together and, and, and playing football together and all the things we did together as a group of friends. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if there was ever a fight or, or something happened where somebody tried, we were there for one another. If one of us was hurt or one of us was down, we were there for one another. We used to work in the stadium together, Tampa Stadium back in the day. His dad his dad ran all the, 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 the concessions for the stadium. And we'd go to the stadium and, and they would have, him and Jeff would have work to do, but we'd all pitch in and help. Because why? They would get, his dad would get us all in for free. And those were our friends and, and, and they would invite us. So it was a friendship. It, it, it's, it's it, it, friendship requires investment. It requires these things. Uh, friendships can also be viewed as an immense source of, of, of an opportunity to grow. Friendships can help you. I don't need any friends, Pastor. Yes, you do. Amen. You do. Why? Because you need to work on your communication skills. Friendships can help you develop communication skills. Friendships can help you develop the ability to become intimate with somebody. Me, me and my friends as kids, we were very intimate. We knew each other's deepest, you know, secrets. We, we, we knew things about each other that in some instances our own parents didn't know about each other, right? As, as little boys, you know, we talked about sexual things and things maybe that we wouldn't talk to our parents about, right? So we were very intimate what yeah, were you I, my my childhood was just the opposite my mom said you got sisters and brothers it was nine of us she said those are your friends right uh, so i didn't get to have that social outlet but when i tried to have a friend it was very difficult for me i was a grown woman right and i 
finally chose to be a friend to uh, one of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I found just how much of an investment you're talking about and the fact that it got ruined and then I had to go back and, and, and straighten it up because I couldn't communicate. Right. I couldn't tell her her boundaries right. in my life. And, and so it, it made it difficult, but we got it together, but it was tough. For me. Yeah, actually friendships too will help you develop the ability to check your ego at the door. Some of you, some of you are so full of yourself. Everywhere you go, you got to put up this facade that you're some, you know, super person and you always look good and you, you always got it all together. Well, a friendship will allow you to, 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 to check your ego at the door. A friendship will allow you to talk to your friend about things that, that maybe you can't talk to others about, to be vulnerable to open up. These are important things in our development as Christians and as humans. Amen of that one. You know, another thing that friendship will help you with is, is, is it will give you an ability to enhance levels of empathy and levels of perspective on things. Friendships will give you the ability to, to, to enhance your ability to be empathetic towards others. Maybe you work a job where you're the boss and you can't always be fully empathetic to the people you're working around. You know, some of y'all want to develop friendships at work. Sometimes that's not the place to have friendships because you need to be serious at work and you can't get too close to people. So you have a friend outside of the job that you can be empathetic with uh, and that you can hear their perspective. One of the things that I really don't, I'm not challenged at all. And what I found through this whole election thing that we just went through is that people really struggle with allowing you to have your opinion. I, I, I'm okay. You, you can fully believe in gay marriage and abortion and all the things that I don't believe in. And, and I'm okay with you. I could go to lunch with a gay person. I'm okay. It, it doesn't... I don't, I don't do that to people. I, I don't try to impose how I feel and my perspective and my values upon people. What I've learned to do as a Christian is live the life of God that he subscribed to us to live. Be a light, love people, operate in joy, operate in peace, right? And what will happen is those people will eventually want to know what you got. If somebody makes a decision to live a life in sin, the Bible tells you what the outcome of that's going to be. They need to know that you're going to be there for them when they want answers. And they need to know you have answers because we do have answers. We have the word of God. Also, it's very important. I was just thinking about something. It's very important also for our children to have friends because you're teaching them at an early age to communicate we have so many kids are sucked into video games. Right. Their social skills are just right. nil, becoming right. nothing because there's no no social and, and, and I'm going to say this, and, and I'm going to leave it right here. The Supreme Court just ruled that governors and the government cannot stop us from coming to church. All of you who stopped coming to church because of COVID, you need to get your tail back in the church. And let me tell you, if you're not in church, you need to get in somebody's church. It's important. The Bible tells us to not forsake not the assembly of thyselves with other believers. You got to get around other believers. Keep joining winning in the word, but you need to be in a local church with a local touch. Amen. Community. At our church, man, we wear masks, we wash hands, we take temperatures. We're going to do all that stuff to keep people safe. But if you go to the store and get groceries, you can come to church. I'm, I'm just being honest. We need to have that social interaction in church. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 or 25, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, in the Amplified, it says this. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another. And all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Now, I don't know if I was very encouraging there, but I was just trying to tell you it's important. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's important as humans for us to have that interactive touch with each other. 
It's important as humans for us to, God wouldn't say these things if he didn't believe them. Also, so, go ahead. Also, I love the end part. It says, uh, to the more faithless you see the day approaching, things are going to be going on. And as we come together, we get strength from one another. Yeah. There's a strength in there. Yeah. It's a power there. And that's why it says to, not to forsake assembly of one another. Right. So listen, as you go today, we asked you last week, ask yourself what kind of friend you are. What we want you to do this week is pray about friends. Again, you need quality, not quantity. So eliminate some friendships today. If you have a lot of them. If you don't have a lot of them, pick a person that you make a decision and sit down and talk to them and say, look, I want to be your friend. I'm going to make an investment in this friendship. And I want you to know that. And begin to take your friendship serious. And if you have a lot of friends and you narrow down, let, let those folks know that. You cannot be all things to all people. Stop trying to do that. But today we encourage you. We encourage you to be that light to be a friend, to value your friendships, and take your friendships seriously. Remember what we said. Number one, friendship is an investment. It's an investment of time, money, emotional energy, and labor. But friendship is also an opportunity for you to develop as a person, for you to develop your communication skills, for you to develop your ability to become intimate with somebody for your ability to check your ego at the door, be able to be transparent and honest and talk to somebody. And then lastly, it will help you with your ability to become empathetic and look at things from another perspective. When you're with your friend, don't always have to be right. Don't always have to have all the answers. Be able to be wrong, okay? We love you, man. Tomorrow's Sunday. We're excited. You guys have had a long weekend. So everybody should be refreshed. Yes. Uh, man, we've been teaching on giving, the blessing of giving at our church. Uh, and on tomorrow, we're going to teach on the sacrificial offering. As you guys know, we're taking up a sacrificial offering on December the 6th because we're believing God to go on TV next year. That's where all your seed has been going. So we appreciate you. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for everyone that gives to make this broadcast possible. We are praying for you every day. We are in agreement yes. with God that your tomorrow will be greater than your today. We're just praying for you. We're believing God's blessing on your life. And until tomorrow, Pastor Nick and Pastor Franny saying, enjoy life. Yes.